Welcome back. In 2020, Google launched the Black Founders Fund program addressing disparities facing black entrepreneurs. The program offers funds to help founders with the goal of expanding their business and achieving generational wealth. Recipient of the Black Founders Fund and COO of the organization, Who's Your Landlord, Elisa Davidson joins me to discuss their experience with the program. Elisa, thank you for joining us. You're very welcome. Thank you for having me. So to start off, can you briefly tell me a little bit about your organization, Who's Your Landlord? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so Who's Your Landlord is a uh, web platform. Um, we started off as a um, just a review platform for, for landlords. Um, we saw an opportunity to change the market um, and use the, the insights and sort of like that data that we would get from residents and turned it into a SaaS product um, where we're able to use those insights and, and data to inform um, who we call home providers, but it's more like landlords and property managers, um, their, their business. Um, we're also able to, to change sort of like that market because they're able to use those insights. Sorry. <clears throat> they're able to use those insights, mm -hmm. um, to inform their capital improvements, um, and increase their NOI. Um, so we definitely saw an opportunity there. There our platform hopes to, our entire mission is to, to center humanity at the heart of housing um, in order to change that relationship between home providers and um, residents. Now, your organization was one of the recipients for Google Startup Black Founders Fund. Now, for those who don't know, can you tell us a little bit more about the Black Founders Fund? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so the Google for Startups Black Founders Fund um, provides non-dilutive cash grants to black founders at early stage companies. Um, I think one of the, the biggest things is that um, we received, selected founders and recipients receive $100,000 in non-dilutive mm -hmm. funds and capital. Um, also, we get like Google Cloud credits and access to, um, you know, Google resources for like hands-on support in order to like help um, grow our startup. Now, can you tell me a little bit about how each of your organizations were affected by the support of such a major organization like Google and the fund itself? Yeah, I think specifically for us, um, I mean, to be transparent, like $100,000 doesn't necessarily change your business by mm -hmm. any means. Um, I mean, we've raised multi-million dollars. And so, um, I mean, like transparently, like 100K doesn't really like move the needle forward. But mm -hmm. I think one of the biggest things was having access to such a you know, like a, a big name company's resources. So, mm -hmm. um, at the time we were closing a round of funding, uh, with our, our seed and Google was there hands-on ready to help us, um, help enacted, you know, a PR strategy along with their like, um, Nectar, Nectar, their PR team. Mm -hmm. Um, so just being ha able to have access to those resources was something that was very beneficial to our company. Um, a, another thing that I think was was super special was um, Google provided the opportunity for us to um, have access to free therapy um, with an executive level coach. So somebody that that really understood some of the plights of you know growing a team and scaling a team and and being a part of like that leadership executive um, you know level and and I think you know mental health especially in this industry um, where you know you are going through a lot of hardships especially as a black black founder it is great to sort of like have that um, that resource and, and that access and, and that opportunity to be able to, you know, like work through those um, hardships. And speaking some of the uh, some of the hardships, what are some additional disparities that black founders face outside of traditional overt racism? So income, resources, education. Can you elaborate a little bit about that? Yeah, I think especially, um, you know, I've I've seen firsthand a lot of the like the nose that we get when it comes to even just raising funds. Um, it's taken us a long time to, to get in the position to where we are currently. Um, and it's not necessarily that that overt racism, but it is very covert, right? Like you'll get like mm -hmm. the subtle nose and you're always just wondering just like why, um, we had been under resourced for so long. Um, and I think, you know, other black founders and black companies, black led companies, you know, um, definitely, have that same common experience. Um, but a lot of the times like you're under resourced, you're underfunded, um, even just for, you know, a lot of ideas that like, say for instance, if you had, um, like a white counterpart or any other, um, you know, like race that were, that is sort of like pitching that idea, they, they would seemingly be more, more successful th than us. Um, so I think a lot of it is just like the, the under, 
under-resourced or even just like having your company valued at um, a lesser, lesser value. Absolutely. And we've heard about racial bias impacting several areas of society. How does it affect those who are business owners and entrepreneurs like yourself? Yeah, I mean, I think to sort of like piggyback on on what I said before, it's it's just a lot of the opportunities that I think um, that we could have, um, we don't. Um, and so I think it is more of like an uphill battle in that way. Um, even, you know, getting access to a lot of other funds, right? Like, I mean, it's great that Google had this opportunity specifically for black founders. Um, but it's, it's not common that we, we get that opportunity. Absolutely. And Google says the goals of their funds are to help promising founders grow their businesses and ultimately create generational wealth. What does that mean to you? I mean, I think for, for, for me specifically, like it provides the opportunity to have this like lasting legacy for my family that I decide to have, you know, mm -hmm. in the future. Um, it, it helps really to your point, create generational wealth where we didn't necessarily have that before, um, where this, this is something that I can like pass on once, you know, we, really do make it with this, this organization. Um, and, and we're definitely in that direction. We're going in that direction pretty, pretty swiftly and, and pretty fast. Um, but it'll, it'll help just provide the resources for, you know, people of color, um, and the opportunities for, for those that don't necessarily get that, that look or that first glance, um, or those opportunities. Absolutely. And the racial wealth gap is a major concern for many. So how is ownership of a business linked to generational wealth? Yes. Um, I think it, I mean, for us, like it definitely helps create equity, right? I think in this, um, in this society, in this generation, in this, you know, in this world that we live in this universe, um, we definitely don't necessarily have a lot of that, that ownership, like systemically, like we've been, mm -hmm sort of, you know, place in the margins. And so, um, this helps create that equity. It helps create, um, more equal and equitable opportunities. Um, it helps create, you know, uh, a, a lane for, and a, and a path for, um, us to be able to hire other, you know, like, um, people of color on our, on our team, um, where, you know, opportunities like this wouldn't come across their, their plate. Um, and so I, yeah, I think, if anything, it's just that, that equitable, um, it's, it's a lot of just, you know, equity for us. Absolutely. And can you tell me a little bit about your experience personally as a black business owner? What are some of the challenges that you faced? Yeah. Um, I, I think a, a, lo a lot of it also comes with like me being like a person of color and a woman in this field. Right. I think, um, a lot of that representation in tech isn't, um, isn't really there. Um, and so it, I tend to get overlooked. Um, you know, like I tend to not necessarily have a voice in these spaces. Um, but I think with having this company, with being able to like grow and scale this company, like it's definitely showing that like we can change that narrative. Um, and that's definitely something that I'm proud of. Congrats. Well, that was absolutely great. And I want to um, ask you a little bit more about what do you think that this fund means for future generations and seeing the diversity of these funds being handed? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I feel like in this entire interview, I've talked a lot about, you know, like opportunity. Um, but I, I feel as though, right, like it shows that we're moving in the right direction. We are making progress, um, changing like, you know, systems that have tended to um, really like marginalize black, you know, black people, black companies. Um, and I, I think specifically, right. Like it helps, um, it helps provide, uh, more, it helps provide more access, um, especially financially. And, um, you know, it helps in, in my opinion, like it'll help decrease sort of like the societal pressures that like black founders face when it comes mm -hmm. to raising funds and scaling and growing a company. Um, and even just, you know, as I sort of like opened up, it, it helps provide like access to resources that like you didn't necessarily have before. Um, I think one of the biggest things, especially with Google is, is the amount, I mean, their name is a, a massive name. They're a massive company. Um, and so even being able to tap into the resources that they provide, 
um, is definitely something that I think is such a great opportunity for, for those that are able to um, experience it. And with this resource, um, you're using your platform to support black and oppressed communities. And how are your businesses mitigating the disparities black Americans are facing? Yeah. Um, I guess this is specific to like our company or just mm -hmm. in general? Your company, yes. Yeah. So I think one of the biggest things, like our company specifically, right, like our founder created this um, this solution because he saw that there was lack of transparency in the rental industry. Um, one of the biggest things that we especially are trying to change is, um, you know, maybe like discriminatory practices when it comes to providing access to, to housing specifically for people of color. Um, if that is an oppor if that is something that, um, you know, is it, that is something that they experience when it comes to looking for housing or we're, we're trying to be able to use data in order to show that that is, um, a theme or that is something that like that landlord or property manager does. Um, help increase transparency, provide people with the tools in order to become more like financially literate, but also like housing literate at the same time. Um, and so I think, think for us specifically, it's all about creating that equitable sort of, um, like that equitable, you know, like lane, um, and, and just like equaling, equaling the playing field, especially when it comes to people looking for housing. Um, I mean, our biggest thing is that, it's so cliche to say, but like housing truly is just like a human right. Um, and I think that like a lot of people just don't see it that way. Um, and it isn't, in my opinion, just like a nice to have, it's just, it's a necessity, um, especially like safe and, and, um, safe, safe spaces are, are very important for people to have. Um, and so our, our company is just helping, you know, increase that transparency so that people can, can have access to that. Elisa, congratulations on the fun, and we wish you all the best in your business. Thank you so much for joining us today. Absolutely. Thank you. We've come to the end of our show today. I'd like to thank all of our guests for joining us and you, the viewers, for tuning in. If you missed any part of today's show, you can catch the Recable cast at 5 and 10 p.m. on Optimum Channel 67 and Verizon Files 33 or watch anytime on the web at bronxnet.org. I'm Brittany Albain filling in for Kibben Aline, wishing you and yours safety and wellness now and always. See you next time.